to you from the Oneida Lake Riding Gun Club. It's the new Oneida Lake Show. It's the new Oneida Lake Show. Cause the old one wasn't good enough. Cause the old one wasn't good enough. Cause the old one wasn't good enough. Sponsored by Angler's Bay, yeah. Bartell Road, Bait and Tackle. Hi folks, Rob Grafredo here from Bartell Road, Bait and Tackle and the New Oneida Lake Show along with my intrepid partner, Pete of Angler's Bay. And we're coming to you, well, somewhat live from the Oneida Lake Sportsman's Club here at Angler's Bay, which, uh, isn't there something about this place going on this week? Opening up this week, finally. Long awaited. So, we'll try to get the show regular on Thursdays and everyone can come in and harass us even more than they already do. That would be phenomenal. We'd enjoy that. We'd have fun with that. This place is shaping up beautifully. Uh, if you don't know what's here, you should stop down. Um, the bar is packed. The, the kitchen is in full effect this place is going to be gorgeous and it's going to be a nice little hidden gem on the north shore of oneida lake so come on in and see him he'll he'll let you know when he's open you know we'll definitely do that so anything else going on this week fishing has been unbelievable as i'm sure you know yeah know. guys are working the drop off along the north shore messengers finally fired up finally uh you know some of my guys are out in shackleton getting bass so they're moving around and even off the beach is still producing any of your guys on shackleton doing walleyes not yet. A couple of them ran just north of it mm -hmm. in that deeper packet, and they did okay. But they definitely had better spots they could go. I started hearing a couple things today that made me think the walleyes are finally starting to migrate east a little bit. Um, some of the guys that have been working the Wan Tree, Dakin, uh, Grassy Triangle there said told me this morning that they did a, they did a little bit better, a little bit further east of there. Not much, but it seems like those fish are starting to move off the grass humps and maybe start going to some of the deeper regular summer haunts. Um, we found 70 degree water out there yesterday, which is still incredibly cold for, you know, what is this, June 24th? Yeah, basically July. Yeah, basically July. So, you know, hopefully it sounds like these fish are starting to move to get a little bit more like they should be this time of year. So, you know, as we go forward, it looks like they're talking about some really warm temperatures by the end of the week. That should kick them in as well. So uh, while you're at it, just get out there and get at them. The, uh, the worm harness bite is absolutely incredible. Um, I can't honestly tell you I've ever seen harness sales like this in June ever. Um, there's still some guys getting them on bucktail jigs with worms. Uh, there's still some guys fishing sonars. Uh, the one thing we're not hearing a lot of is, is the stick bait bite. It's kind of non-existent. Um, but there are guys, even the trollers are pulling worm harnesses right now, and that's pretty amazing. So, anything to add to that? No, I've been the same thing. Really, all colors with the worm harnesses, too. Yeah. You know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, orange was going... Yep. Big like this, and it's been streaky with orange over the last couple of years, and it was definitely hot this week. Green was good too. Green's been. Yep. I, I'm selling a lot of green. Um, it's this is the first time I've really heard green becoming a player as much as it is. But uh, honestly, with the hammer is a locally made spinner rig that I can't keep on the rack, um, and the green and the chartreuse and the orange blades seem to be the ones that are selling the most. So. Uh, you know, I would say get your hands on some harnesses and get out there. The walleyes are, eat no, I'm not going to say they're easy, but they kind of are. So, my guys are fun. 0 0.8, 0 0.9 for most of their fish. Oh, here, that's, so. okay, so they're trolling them. Yeah, they yeah. were trolling them, get, you know, two-ounce bottom bouncers, getting them down. That's pretty good. I mean, they're, they're still catching them casting as well, yeah. so the weed bite is still heavily on, so you have some options as far as how to get them, so... I want to talk about bass a little bit here. You guys are going to, this is going to sort of be like the confession, confessional of a bass fisherman. Um, yesterday was the 2018 Cash and Rods Northern Tour Oneida Lake Open. It has been on this weekend for the last six years, and it almost seems like Mother Nature says, oh, Cash and's that weekend. I am going to throw a massive east wind at you. Um, I learned a lot yesterday. Um, some of it not so good, uh, but at the same time, I also learned a lot about myself and how mature I become as a tournament angler. Uh, I'm not mature as a person. We all know that. <laughs> but um, so I'll give you a quick recap on how the day went. Um, first and foremost, I didn't have any practice time, uh, and that's something that has to change. Uh, I'll get a little more into that later. But we got we were about 86 out of 100 yesterday. So we got to the ramp. The meteorologists were calling for about 9 to 15 out of the southeast. Well, my buddy had a wind meter at the ramp, and at 6.30 a.m. it was 24 out of the dead east at that point. Um, those of you who know Oneida Lake know that that means we basically had the Atlantic Ocean. 
Um, it actually wasn't that horrible when we took off in the morning. Now, there was cash and rods with 100 boats. The uh, Marsh Creek Bassmasters with 12 going out of Big Bay Marina. Uh, the Bergen County Bassmasters with 14 boats going out of Hidden Harbor. And the New York State Kayak Federation was at the Waterfront Tavern in Brewerton. So with this wind coming, I kind of knew that a lot of people were going to end up in my river. Uh, I like to fish the river. But with that much traffic in there, I made a decision, which I've been called crazy for it, but if you really think the sense of it, it makes sense. Um, I decided to go to Sylvan Beach. Yes, by boat. Um, I drive a 21-foot Sprint with a 225 Johnson on it. Um, I had no illusions of being able to run. Um, I knew this was going to take us a long time. I was timing the waves and trying very hard just not to slap them. I was going up and over and up and over. Maybe about 12 miles an hour was, I think, the max we were able to do in the middle part of the lake. Um, I can tell you we had sustained four to five footers. I saw several six footers, and I absolutely saw a couple legitimate seven foot waves. Uh, those were the ones I couldn't see over from sitting in the seat of the boat. And I, it was kind of neat because I wasn't nervous. Even though my wife was my partner about halfway, about shackled and shoals, I looked at her, she gave me a thumbs up. And that tells me my driving was pretty good because she would absolutely have told me if she wanted to turn around. Um, she has been my tournament partner for a very long time, and she is confident in my driving abilities, and that means the world to me. So we went. Took two hours to get there. Yeah, two hours to go 22 miles. Um, when I got there, I couldn't feel my two middle fingers for about an hour because they were, my nerve endings were probably stressed out from gripping the wheel. And when I went to get up on the front deck, I almost walked right off it because I was wobbly from the ride. Then the hard part was the fish that I was sure were going to be there weren't. So I told Kim at some point that if we didn't have 16 to 17 pounds, you know, I wasn't going to risk us. I, I said, I don't want to break the boat. I don't want to break us. Um, I don't want to put up with too much more. We burned a whole tank of gas and almost a whole tank of oil going down. So we had to get gas and oil down there. Um, we ended up doing everything we know how to do. And that wind at the lake level was as strong as it was up high out in the lake. So even though there was only about a one foot chop at the beach, the wind was blowing so hard, boat positioning was tough and casting was tough. Um, I'll be honest with you, I kind of was at a loss for what to do. Um, we finally put some largemouth in the boat, nothing to shake a stick at, you know, no size, maybe two pounders. Um, Kimmy hooked up with what she thought was a big smallmouth, it was a sheephead. And we found a couple pickerel in 20 feet of water. I have no idea what that's all about, but it's a pickerel. They're here. So about 1 o'clock, I said, all right, let's, it looked like it went northeast. So I said, let's go back to the North Shore. So we started heading back, and we got to about Vienna, and it took about the third big wave that we smacked the front of the boat down. And I said, you know what? That, I'm not doing this. Uh, we pulled in here. We pulled into Angler's Bay, uh, tied up the boat to the dock. Barrow Peter's truck, thank you very much. Called the tournament director, said we're safe on shore. Uh, Marcus Down is out. And we drove to Burton to get our trailer, pulled the boat out of Godfrey Shore, and it was grabbed, yeah, Godfrey Point, and it was over. Um, that decision is the first time I've ever done that in my career. I've been tournament fishing since I was 15, so that's 33 years. Um, what it tells me is that I become a little more seasoned and mature as an angler. Um, and that's probably the only redeeming thing to me about yesterday. I'm comfortable with my decision to go. I'm comfortable with my driving ability to get us there. Um, I'm comfortable with the decision to pull out. What I'm upset with myself about is I wasn't prepared for this tournament. Um, congratulations to Stan Sipek and Steve Kroll. You guys put up a big bag over 20 pounds. And I know you guys were on the lake every day this week preparing for it. Um, I know how Stan operates. He, he didn't fish the Bassmaster Classic for nothing. Um, he was out here 10 hours, 12 hours a day putting it together. And he, and he had Friday to figure out that east wind. Uh, the second place team of Tyler Morgan and his partner were right behind Stan. And same thing. They spent a lot of time this week preparing. And that's kind of the lesson of this. What, what I'm upset with myself about is over the years, 
probably the first 15 years of my fishing tournament career were, I, I won't say that I regret them because I learned so much. I met so many great people. I had some great experiences and adventures, but I never put the time in. Uh, I never put the preparation in for the, those tournaments. And in some cases I wasted my money because I went out there and just flailed around. Um, the, from that point forward in my career, I really started putting the time in. Uh, practice is everything. If you're going to be a good golfer, you gotta, you got to play golf. Uh, if, if you're going to be a top-notch quarterback in the NFL, you've got to play quarterback all the time. You can't just stop it during the offseason. Um, and the same goes for fishing, whether it's tournament walleye fishing or tournament bass fishing. You have to put in your time. You have to learn. You have to be open-minded. Um, it's great that we have the Internet now, but sometimes turn off the Internet and go learn it for yourself. And that's what I came away from yesterday with my biggest thing is I have been failing myself and my team partner, who happens to be my wife, because I haven't been putting the time on the water the last couple of years that I should. We've been fishing tournaments blind, and that's just no way to go. That's just, it's almost like wasting money. Yes, it's fun. I get to fish with my wife. That part, I'm okay with, but we're not out there just to fish. We're out there to cash checks and to compete and be on the top of our game. So yesterday really, really hammered it home to me that I need to get back to doing what I used to do. And that is going out there and picking the lake apart each time like it's a different lake. That's my best advice to anybody. Get, get off the internet, go fishing. Go out there and look, run your graphs. Look at your seasonal, look at your weather. What's the wind doing? What's the temperature doing? What's the water temperature doing? Are the weeds where they should be or are they not? What what are the conditions that you're fishing that day, not the conditions that you fished a week ago or two weeks ago? Um, you know, that I'm very fortunate now that the shop is, is starting to do extremely, extremely well, and I have some help. And what's going to happen now is that I'm actually going to take the time I need to prepare for these tournaments. Um, I have to. It's, it's the only right thing to do for myself, for my wife, for, even for the business, because when we do well, it shines a great light on the shop. It shines a great light on this show. Um, people look to me to help them learn and to teach them. Well, what kind of example is it if I'm not doing it for myself? So I ate a lot of humble pie yesterday. I'm doing some of it now live on this show. And, you know, I promise you that I'm going to come back better and stronger. Uh, I will not be caught in a situation where I'm unprepared again. Uh, and that's all it was. I was unprepared. I'll say it straight up. Um, and it was an expensive weekend between entry fee, gas, oil, the things we had to do to compete. So it's a lesson learned, uh, a hard lesson to learn. I am beat up. I probably look exhausted because I am. Um, I got up this morning and went to work at 6 a.m. and worked all day after getting the absolute tar beat out of me on this place yesterday. My upper body and arms are completely sore from driving the boat, not for any other reason. Uh, you know, and anybody that tells you that a tournament angler, whether it be a bass tournament angler, a walleye tournament angler, a crappy tournament angler, a saltwater angler, if you're a tournament angler, you're an athlete. Anybody that was on that lake yesterday knows exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it is a physical and mental game, and it can be crushing if you allow it to be. So be prepared for every situation, not just the fishing part, the physical part. We forced water down our throats all day yesterday to stay hydrated. The wind was howling. You know, you can hear my voice. This is just from talking to my wife from the front deck to the back deck. You know, it, it is a physically grueling, grinding thing to do. I love it. It's in my blood. It's probably one of my favorite things to do. I will never stop. If I ever stop tournament fishing, it's because I stopped learning or I stopped having fun. And I hope to heck that never happens because... This is what we do. So I'm ready to put Cash in 2018 Spring Tournament behind me. Um, I am now hell-bent on doing well next year in this tournament because I've always stunk it up in this event. I'll go win the next week. I'll go win the, the week prior. But when it comes to this event, I always stink it up, and that's got to change. I'm not good with that. I love this event. It's run well. I'm fishing against some amazing talent and some big-time sticks from all over the Northeast. I should do better on this lake. This is my home lake. So that's my motivation now to, do, to put in the work to do better. It starts tomorrow. 
I had the Monday night event here. We uh, we had 11 boats in a rain short in a rain shortened event last week. Um, we should have a lot more tomorrow night, and it's going to start. I'm working a half day tomorrow, and I'm fishing the afternoon. I will be ready for tomorrow night. I will be ready for Wednesday night at Onondaga Lake, and then for the next event, Kim and I are fishing Fishers of Men in a few weeks. I'll be ready for that as well. Um, it starts now. So the humble pie has been eaten, the beating has been taken, um, and I hope each and every one of you guys learns a little something from my folly. And again, go fishing. Go learn. Listen to the people talking to you. Take the information you learned online, and then go apply it. And by that, I mean go figure it out. Use that info to teach yourself how to be a better angler. Use your surroundings to lead you that way. Um, there's a lot of grass missing in this lake right now. We're way behind. You find grass, you find rock, you're probably going to find fish. And I mean all kinds of fish, not just bass. I'm talking to walleyes as well. But those are little things. Like, for example, I had a guy talking to today. We were talking about the lack of grass. I said, I, he owns Big Bay Marina, Mikey, uh, Mikey Eckert. And I said, Mikey, look at the tule grass behind your marina. How big is it? He said, well, it's like that. I said, yeah, how big should it be right now? He goes, holy cow, I didn't even think about that. It should be about like that. It's not, because we're behind. I found 70.7 degree water out there on June 23rd. I'm thinking we should be more like 77, 78 by now. So those little things, don't ignore that. Be observant around you and put in your time, please. So... If you want, take me, take, take me on. I'd love to hear comments. I'd love to hear questions. Um, you can go to www.onidalakefishingreports.com. Go into the message board. Um, we're going to try to get back on a schedule of doing fishing reports on a daily basis. But if you have any questions for me on this topic, hit me up. If you have any questions on the Oneida Lake Sportsman's Club, hit Pete up. Um, I love how many of you are starting to talk about this show. I love how many people are subscribing. Uh, like Pete said, we're going to get on a regular basis, maybe even with an audience in here. That'd be phenomenal. I'd <laughs> love to do that. So there, I'm done. Um, I've said it. I told my wife today I'll never be unprepared again. She said, I have faith in you. And you know what, man? That's important. Are you uh, going to double down on the bet we had for Fishers of Men, or are you going to pay up this Thursday? Which term do you want me to double out, down on? Oh, see, you're going to double down. Which one do you want me to do it on? Fishers and Men. Okay, that'll be Cayuga. Cayuga Lake. It's a bold move, not even on your home water. I won it two years ago. So you, okay. <laughs> so anything worse than first. All right, then we'll it, do it. It, the, it is on. And you'll see, I'll even wear my T-Rex hat. No, no. One. We've got some good props. Oh, boy. <laughs> he means it, too. <laughs> So, pretty good, Rob. Uh, definitely yesterday was, was something. Never We've had a couple of days like that already this year. Yeah. Um, and it, people were pretty smart about it, I thought, yeah. by and large. We didn't see too many boats out there, and uh, people were definitely being cautious. So, we appreciate that. Everybody got through the weekend in one piece. That's always important. We yeah. will see you guys again later this week. And yeah. what else? Anything? No, I think we're good. Um, okay. Check back, subscribe, please. If you like this, comments are appreciated. Please leave them for us. Um, otherwise, we'll see you guys in another week. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night.